Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will look at how to perform a live capture and use incidents response tools. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I can continue to be kind. There will be circumstances where you will encounter a live system and a decision is made that you cannot shut it down and must extract critical information. Reasons behind the decision could be that the legal authority does not allow an in interruption to the company servers, or that there is encryption being utilized and shutting down the computer may result in lost access to unencrypted data. It is recommended that the live capture commands be run such that the output be redirected into files on an external staging media. For this video, let's mount an external drive and save all the data there. So we're going to do ls block dash s to see what available drives there are. Ours is going to be sdc. We can do a disk type on slash dev slash sdc. And now we know that the second partition is the one that we are going to be using. I'm going to do sudo mount slash dev sdc2 slash mnt slash usb. And we are going to be using the command T to run these tools because the T command will display the output to the screen and also write it out to the specified file. The dash A option of the T command will append any new information to the end of the file. The date command is used to set or display the system date and time. So we can do date, pipe it to T, dash a slash mnt slash usb slash date dot text so now we get the date and time displayed along with the time zone the uname command is used to display information about the system so let's type uname dash a pipe it to t dash a slash mnt slash usb slash uname dot text Specifying the dash A option will display all of the data, which includes kernel name, network host name, kernel release, kernel version, machine hardware name, process type, hardware platform, and operating system. The who am I command shows the name of the current users. So who am I, pipe it to T dash A slash MNT slash USB slash whoami.txt. The who command shows the logged on users. So who, pipe it to t, dash a, slash mnt, slash usb, slash who.txt. Here we can see the various users who are currently logged on. So we have Blue Monkey, Yo Mama, Joe User, and Evil Doer, in addition to root. The W command shows who is logged in and what they are doing. So we can do W, pipe it to T, dash A, slash MNT, slash USB, slash W dot T, X, T. The first line of the output shows the system time, how long the machine has been running, the number of users, the load average for the last 1, 5, and 15 minutes. Then the following entries show the username, the terminal where they're on, and the remote host if applicable, the login time, idle time, CPU loads, and the command that is actively being run by that user. So we can see that this user is running the top command we can see evildoer is doing vi on a document named bombmaking.txt. Joe user is running sqlite on this particular database. The last command shows a listing of users login and log outs. So we can run it by last pipe to t dash a slash mnt slash usb slash last.txt. So we can see uh, most of these users have logged in at their login time from this data point there, and they're still logged in. Looks like Evo Doer had actually logged in 
for about 55 minutes and then logged out. And in this column here, we can see where these users are logged in from. A lot of these are from the local machine, the 127.0.0.1. And here is one that is remote logged in from another IP. The lsof command lists open files. This is a very useful command to use when you're trying to unmount a volume and umount returns with an error that says the target is busy. In that case, I would do a lsof of the mount point, and then the output would show all processes that are being executed within the mount point. So let's type lsof of slash mnt slash usb, which is the mount point we're interested in. And again, we're going to pipe it to t-a slash mnt slash usb slash lsof.txt. And we can see here that there is a process that is actively VIing a file that is on this mount point. The history command lists the commands typed for that particular shell. This could be extremely useful in establishing what the user did. A related file to the history command is the .bash history file. This file, which is located at each user's home directory, contains the history log for each individual user's. And this file is only generated once a user logs out. You will need root access to be able to see the other user's files. And I recommend copying out all these files for all the users and all open shells. The list of commands covered in this video is not the exhaustive list of the commands you should use in a live capture situation. Other commands covered in other videos you may want to run in a live capture could include any of the hardware-oriented commands like lshw, lsscsi, lspci, lsusb, etc. You may also want to obtain file system information, so commands like lsblock, mount, df, etc. may be useful. You may be interested in networking information, so the commands like ifconfig, netstat, arp, etc. may be useful. You may be interested in process-related information, so commands like ps, jobs, etc. may be useful. If you are interested in information from the running system, perhaps copying out files from the var log folder or the slash etsy folder could be useful. I recommend using tar to create a tarball of the files in those folders so that you have a containerized version of those files and folders. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about live capture concepts and incidence response tools, some basic commands for obtaining the system date, OS info, current and historic users were covered. We also covered the lsof command, which lists open files so you know what files are actively being worked on. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.